Most visitors to Rimini, Italy go for fun in the sun. But for those who know that Rimini is home to Bimota, one of the most exclusive motorcycle brands in the world, the reason to come here is to twist the throttle. Centuries ago, Rimini was an important outpost of the Roman Empire. Today, it is one of the most famous seaside resorts along Italy's Adriatic Riviera. It is a beach lover's paradise, but it can also get quite warm in the summer. And perhaps that's the reason Bimota originally started as a heating and air conditioning company. Bimota actually started with three gentlemen, Mr. Bianchi, Mr. Mori, Mr. Tamburini, each of whom donated two of their letters from their last name into forming Bimota in the heating and air conditioning business. And they were doing sheet metal ducting and building tubing and those kinds of things. And it turns out that Mr. Tamburini was a motorcycle nut. Mr. Tamburini is Massimo Tamburini, a man who would become one of the greatest motorcycle designers of all time. And if he hadn't crashed while racing a powerful Honda in 1972, Bimota might still be making air conditioners. While recovering from three broken ribs, Tamburini got the inspiration to use what he knew about metal pipes to build a new frame for his motorcycle. Mr. Tamburini built a frame for his Honda single cam 750, took it to the racetrack, and when he was running around the racetrack, he started getting noticed because it was an extremely fast bike. And shortly thereafter, he started having people come up to him and say, would you make a frame for my bike? So Massimo Tamburini went into the motorcycle frame business. His first frame lowered the weight and center of gravity on the Honda. He called his creation the HB1, H for Honda, B for Bimota, and one because it was the first bike the company ever built. The bike also began a tradition of exclusivity because only 10 HB1s were ever made. The way I describe Massimo Tamburini is he's a motorcycle genius. Here's a man that really started out in the heating and air conditioning business, and he built a chassis for a Honda. He just absolutely had a sense of how to develop things. I don't think he has a tremendous amount of formal education as far as you know, doing finite element analysis on computers and stuff like that. He just has a certain innate ability to understand what's required and how to get there. And so if you look at some of the frames he did, I would say genius on one hand, and he's a motorcycle artist on the other hand. As a really small motorcycle company, Bimota couldn't afford to design and build its own engines. So Tamburini sold kits, so you could build your own Bimota using parts from a donor bike. They didn't offer bikes originally, they offered frame kits where you would buy a complete Japanese motorcycle, you'd take the engine out, you'd take the wiring harness off, you'd take some of the controls off, you'd take the instruments off, you build it into this kit you bought from him, and now you had a GP replica bike, or a, you know what became a super bike that you could build yourself. During the 70s and early 80s, Bimota would use engines from Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, and Kawasaki to power its motorcycles. While Bimota is successful on the racetrack, it suffers the loss of Massimo Tamburini, who's hired away to work at Kajiva, one of the largest motorcycle companies in Italy. His replacement is a young engineer named Federico Martini. He did two very significant bikes. The first one he did was the YB4. The YB4 is the first bike that was in production that had a perimeter aluminum frame around it. The other thing that Federico Martini did was design the DB1. The DB1 is very special because it was the first all Italian bike 
dip a mode of bait. All Italian because the DB1, like current B-Motors, is powered by an engine built by Ducati. Pierre Luigi Marconi was the third head designer at B-Moda and the man responsible for a radical design that eliminates the traditional forks and front end on a motorcycle and connects the front wheel with a very different structure. The idea is to keep the weight of the bike off the front wheel. Others have tried it, but Bimota is the only company building the bike, a bike called the Tessie. The reason they call it the Tessie is because when Pierluigi Marconi had done his thesis on, on alternate front suspensions in the, for his PhD at the University of Bologna, the word Tessie in Italian means thesis. With the Tessie and the rest of the current Bimota line, the tiny company from Rimini has come full circle. It builds rare and exclusive motorcycles, and it still is willing to take a risk and push both conventional wisdom and motorcycle technology with a twist of the throttle.